Hello and welcome to another edition of Commodore 64 programming series by Deadline. That's me. We're going to talk about our, our disk tool that we're making. Um, we're going to add disk load and save and we're also going to add uh, a random number generator because we're going to need it. And we're going to do that with the SID chip. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now I've already uh, loaded up my editor. I've got pretty much what amounts to part seven copied into part eight. And we're just gonna go through and uh, update this little monstrosity. So for the most part, the beginning's gonna be the same. So let's go ahead and go down here. We want to move, let's see, we want to change around the variable space in the variables because we're going to need some different variables for this so let's go ahead and I've already pre-calculated some stuff and I happen to know that at the end of this this is where the basic program is going to end or the memory is going to be lined up so that 17d2 is going to be where we need to put our variables so the first variable we're going to do we're actually going to change from kickassembler.var we're going to change this to a memory location we're just going to put a dot byte zero there for now because we want to use the zero page fb variable for something else in a minute i got that then we need uh, some variable space for the file name. And then uh, we'll do encoding, screen code, mixed. This is a um, kick assembly directive to define how the text is going to be saved. So it's going to be screen code mix. This will be our file name that we're going to be saving it to. You can rename it however you want, but uh, I just chose this tool data. And then we'll just add some bytes on the end. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. And this will just give us some uh, extra room in case we want to fill out our file name a little bit more but for now we're just going to call it disk tool data and then file name length is another memory location and uh, we're just going to go with uh, 12 for now because that's the length of our text disk tool data so that covers the file name memory space now we're going to put in a couple of constants data start we're going to work with memory location 6000 hex and then we're going to only use 250 55 bytes of data storage And so the reason why we're putting this in as a constant is because we're going to have to tell the kernel routines, uh, the load and save routines, actually probably just more of the save. The save is going to be 6,000 and it ends at 6100. So that's our... Uh, constants for the data location and we want to add a couple of more constants z pointer pointer low string fb dollar sign fb and that was what our old drive number variable was stored as but we want to be able to use these zero page pointers And you'll see why 
we're going to need that. So there we go. Those those are the new variables that we're going to need. Now let's see what else do we need. We're going to need disk data to be able to save. Some sort of data that we can verify is, um, you know, being saved to the disk and that way we can view the data. We're going to put a little view uh, for the data that we're going to be working with. It'll look like a, a disk sector. Uh, what do you call it? A block of memory on the disk when we visualize it on the screen. So what we're going to do here, we'll say, we'll put a memory directive 17E8. And we'll call this disk data. Did I put a directive here? No. 17E2, we'll call this vars. The reason why we want to put a little label after that is because when we compile this biz, it's going to be, it'll show it in the, uh, in the bottom like this down here, right? This is the memory map. So if you look, yeah, oh, um, dollar sign 0801 to dollar sign 080C, your basic upstart, then 80D to AE3, main program. Then 1000 to 17D1 is your screen. Um, screen memory from like your disk, disk program. This guy, screen disk tool. That's where that memory starts. So it starts at 1000, goes to 17D1. And then uh, you got your VARs. That's what this biz is here. And then your disk data. That's what we're about to put in. 17E8. Let's see. We're going to make a new file. We're going to call it diskdata.asm. Right? And so that directive tells uh, KickAssembler to load this assembly language block into 17E8. And then from here, it's pretty much the same as. Um, part seven right this actually still works drive number variable because it's now a memory location here so we don't have to change that and um, I'm gonna go ahead and jump ahead and then put in a couple of things here that we haven't already got yet. I want to copy the disk data data to working memory area 6000 hex. That's where we put the directive up here. The data start. And for 256 bytes, that's where our data will reside. Okay. And so we'll put a copy, jump subroutine, copy disk data. And that's what it'll do. It'll copy the disk data from uh, this location, 17E8, to 6000. So that we can modify it there. And then, for this, we're going to set up SID to produce random values and uh, the way this works is you've got a maximum value that you want right maximum value frequency value okay and we want 255 so we're putting 255 into the accumulator and we're going to store that at location D40E. And that is voice 3 frequency. Did I spell it right? No. Frequency. Low byte. Okay. And then we're going to store that in D40F. 
And this is voice three frequency high bite. It's for your SID voice three oscillator. Now we're going to load accumulator with 80. This will be the noise waveform. Gate bit off. I'm going to store that at D412. And that is the voice 3 control register. And that's it. That, now your SID is oscillating, producing random values. We only have to call one. We we load accumulator with a certain value, and that will give us a random number. Okay. So then, everything's initialized now. The init is done. Okay. And so, we're gonna draw draw the drive draw the drip excuse me draw the pet mate screen then we're gonna draw the drive number on top of that and then jump to the main loop I've already gone over the stuff in the last episode so we'll go ahead and go to the main loop we're gonna have to add some new some new key checks here and um, just for the sake of being a little more expedient I'm gonna just paste what I've already worked out All right so L we want to load the data and we're going to create a routine in just a moment called load data so it's going to jump subroutine load data and let's jump back to start okay so that's your L key and um, the next one is going to be S for save Right. So we're checking the S key. If it's hit, we're going to jump to subroutine save data. And then we want to have a way to view the data so that we can verify what's going on. So what we want to do here is add a V, key V. If the V key is, is hit, you want to jump to subroutine view disk data. And then boom, pretty simple. Now we want to add also randomized data with the R key. You hit R, jump subroutine randomized disk data, and then view the disk data. Now what we're talking about here is the data that we're going to be storing at 6,000, this area not the um, the disk data that's imported. So the disk data that's imported is not going to be touched. It's going to be in an Arian RAM just hanging out, right? And the reason why we want to do that is so that we can restore the data after we randomize it or load in, right? So we want to add another key. We'll call it uh, E to restore the original data. And here we want to jump to subroutine copy disk data if you hit the E key. And if you look in the init, right, it's the same function. So it's just copying the original disk data into this memory area location. All right. So that's what we're going to do. So now the keys are done. So we've got L, S, V, R, and E added. Okay, it's pretty much just the same thing as these other key checks, but a little different. Okay, so now that we got the keys checking done, we can go ahead and jump down. Let's go to the very end, right? And here, we'll just go ahead and this is our new load data function. All right, so let's clear the screen. Black. And then load X. 
load your X register with zero. And then we'll create a label that we can traverse. Um, load accumulator with load loading, comma X. This is going to give you a little display to the screen that you're loading something. Okay. Wrench of equal to label LD plus and then store accumulator screen RAM comma X. Ah, come on. So what we're doing is scrolling through a little bit of text to poke it to the screen, basically. Increment the X register. Jump to label LD minus. Okay, that'll go back to the beginning. Then LD, another label. And load X again with zero. Clear that out. And we're going to create another label here. And then load A with file name, comma X. This is our file name variable at the very top. This guy. File name. It's going to be showing this disk tool data. And for now, we're just showing it on the screen. All right, you're loading the file name. But there's a little caveat when you're talking about these little um, bytes and things being poked to the screen versus how the disk it saves that and so we're gonna counter that and I'll show you what I mean here in a second branch of equals to LD plus label now we're gonna compare that with number 27 branch of carry clear to see if in don't add L Okay, SBC, subtract with carry, 40. Ah, oh, 40, come on. Right. And here's our label from don't add L, L don't add L. And then we're gonna store the accumulator on screen RAM, plus eight, comma X. And once we get this compiling, I will show you what that does. Actually, let's see if it'll compile as it is. It probably won't because we don't have the, the disk data assembly file. But we can make one. Then we'll branch if not equal here to LD label minus. And this is gonna scroll through The, uh, the disk file name and poke it to the screen in the correct screen code numbers. If we don't do this, compare with 27 and then if it's greater than subtract, it's going to be looking all kind of funky on the screen. We'll see what happens if we compile it. Yep, it's complaining exactly what I thought it would. Let's go ahead and create the new file. We'll call it a disk data.asm. And there it is. So to begin this, we're going to look at our disk data that I've already prepared. <clears throat> well let's go ahead and let's go ahead and fill this out, right? That way we'll have it. So what we got is a disk data label here. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna load from 17E8, right? And then you import that disk data. That's where your label's gonna be, 17E8. That's your memory location. And as you can see, it's just a bunch of different bytes, a different different bunch of bytes that we can work with a little block of data and um, let's go ahead and uh, fill out the subroutines that we're gonna need 
So we got copy disk data is our first subroutine. We're going to load X with zero and create a label CPDD. Load accumulator with disk data comma X. Store that at data start comma X. And remember data start is our constant right so it's going to be looking at 6000 is where it's wanting to put it comma x pretty simple increment x then branch if not equal to cpdd minus rts that's our copy disk data routine now to display disk data we're going to need the subroutine display disk data We're going to load X with zero, and then CPD D, yeah we can use that as a label, sure why not, load accumulator, data start, comma X, actually let's change this, display disk data, I don't, I don't want to be confusing anyone here. something here okay where was I okay so yes 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 so we're loading the start of the data comma X which is zero at this time and then we're going to store that on the screen plus 400 so that'll be a few rows down so it'll be kind of in the center of the screen All right so we're going to store the accumulator there we're going to increment the X register branch, if not equal, to DDD minus RTS. That's your display disk data subroutine. It's just copying a block of memory to the screen memory. Okay, so we're going to now add a more convoluted view disk data. It's going to call this display disk data, but we did that so that we can call display disk data on its own as well as do a more highfalutin call to the uh, to view the data. So we're going to jump subroutine display disk data here. Now I'll put it on to the middle of the screen, we're going to load X with zero, VDD, make a label, VDD, load accumulator with dire, press key text, comma X, and we're doing this so that we can print off the, the disk data and then have it wait for a key to be pressed, right? Branch of equals to VDD plus, jump subroutine, kernel, char out, which uh, I believe that's FFD2, increment the X register, jump to VDD minus label, which will put it back up here. So it's printing off press key press any key right so once that's done it's gonna be here jump subroutine kernel wait key it's gonna wait for a key until it some key is hit and then RTS simple now, if you're wondering where we get the dire pre press key text from, well, that's already been made. Press key text. Let's take a look. Here it is. Right? We've already made that. That's already in there from uh, the last episode. So we can reuse that. 
And now one final thing for this disk data stuff is we're going to add randomize disk data as a subroutine. Load the X register with zero. And then randomize disk data as a label. Load the accumulator with D41B. And this is the location that you get your random number from the SID. Get random number from SID. Okay. So here's the thing about um, getting a random number. Sometimes if your program's running very, very fast, you're going to hit that SID register more than once and it's going to give you two random numbers quote unquote but it'll be before it updates so in order to fix this this problem we're going to do a compare right with the last rent and then this will be a little byte that we're going to store at the end so that we can update that every time and check for duplicates so there won't be any duplicates so there you might have like two in a row or three in a row you don't want that you want it to all be different right so it's um so what this is saying here you're going to compare it to the last random and if it is equal, then you're just gonna jump here, get another random number from the SID. I mean, it's kind of a blocking thing. You know, it's probably not the best way to do it, but it will do it until you get a different random number than the last random number, okay? All right, we're gonna store that in the last rand. That's so you can do a future check on last rand. And then store that in data start comma x this is going to fill out our data block increment the x register and then branch if not equal to rdd minus and it'll do it again until the x register hits zero again for a full 255 bytes of random data and then we'll return from subroutine Oh, you thought we were done, but we're not. We gotta fill in that last rand biz. So we're gonna put that last rand label and then dot byte zero. It could be anything because it's gonna change. Alright. And there you go. That should be good for our disk data file. Let's see if we can compile this now. Oh, we need to save data. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. We're going to put save data, just temporarily in RTS, okay? I haven't got into any of the disk routines yet. Just setting up the subroutines for it. So what are we looking at? We're like load loading. All right, let's see what that's missing. Let's see what we're missing here load loading it should be yes okay that is our our text so we're gonna put that right at the end of our um, load routine here oh I went too far load data here and load loading is just um, a, a bit of text that we can scroll through and print to the screen let's see if it'll compile now Okay, see if and don't add what the in disk tool dot ASM on line two ninety one. Oh, I did not put the colon there for the label. Make sure you do that. See if and don't add L colon. Alright, can we compile it? Yes, it compiled. And what do we got? Uh, what was I going? What was the point of this? 
Hmm, good point. Let's see. I don't. Let's see. Can we view? Yes. There's our view, right? That's the data from uh, our disk data. ASM, and it allows you to view the data, then press a key. Let's see if randomize works. Ah, randomize does work. Look at that. It randomized our data block. We're gonna view, view, view data again. View the data again, and it's the same. So we're good to go as far as our data. Now we need to work on the save and load. And restore data should also work. Let's see. Yes. Okay, so view data, restore data, and randomize data all are working. That um, with the SID random function. And then uh, we just need to add the save data and load data. Okay. So we're pretty much almost done. So let's go ahead and take a further closer look at the load, the load function, the load data function. All right, instead of just RTSing here, let's go ahead and add some space. We printed on the screen that we're loading a file. The file name from file name, okay? So in order to get into the disk loading stuff, we're gonna have to call a couple of kernel routines. So first one, 0F. Load accumulate with a string dollar, dollar sign zero F, load X with drive number. That's the memory location that stores the drive number. It's in load Y with <clears throat> FF. And then this is for setting the drive number that we're working with. Kernel set logic file system. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that's doing here. Include in the constants. I put some notes in the constant file that kind of maybe will help you to understand what's going on a little better. It's just stuff from, uh, you know, Commodore Programmer's Reference Guide. Let's see, what are we looking at? Set LFS, set LFS, here it is. So A is the logical number, X is the device number, and Y is secondary address output. So what we're seeing here is, um, is equivalent to typing in, in basic open, uh, what's F, uh, 15 comma, eight comma 255 comma whatever right or whatever that basic command is that you open up logical files that's pretty much what we're doing here same thing so we got that done the next thing is we're going to set the name of the file and that is another kernel call but you got to set up some things load accumulator with file name length and that is our variable from the top um, file name length is 12 in this case right so the accumulator takes the file name length load x with the low byte of file name file name and then load y it, the high byte of file name wherever that is in memory and jump subroutine kernel set name so we've set the drive number now we've set the file name simple so far right now we're going to do the kernel load subroutine. 
So we'll load X with zero. Load Y, zero. And load accumulator with zero. Jump subroutine, kernel load. But let's take a look again at the constants file. Look at kernel load. Where are we at? Kernel load, kernel load. Here it is. So zero is load. One to 255 is verify. And then that's for the accumulator. So we have A equals zero. If it was anything else, you're verifying the file. That's not what we want. But you could, I guess, if you wanted. Then X and Y is the load address. If secondary address equals zero. Okay, so that's what that's saying here is we can set up instead of uh, reading. Whoa, let me stop here. Oh, okay, let's stop. So what this does is it takes the file pointer that you're loading that's embedded into the file. In other words, the first two bytes of the file are going to be the load location. And we'll take a look in a minute at the actual sector on the disk, and it will be string 6000. But you could set this up to where you're loading it in like a high byte, low byte format to a new memory location. Like for instance, if you wanted to set it to 4000, right? You, let's see, which is it? Uh, so I'm gonna guess that X is the low byte. Right, so you put low byte of 4,000, and then right, that would load it into 4,000 instead of 6,000 hex. But we don't want that. We just want it to load right into where it saved it from, which is 6,000. Okay, and then that's pretty much it for the load. I'm going to put in a couple of new prints. We're going to print um, carriage return a couple times. And then uh, we're going to jump subroutine show drive status. Okay, that'll give us the status, which we did in the last episode. Then load X, zero, zero. And what is this gonna do for us? We're going to, it's gonna be the print press any key function. And I just pasted it, yes. Don't be confused. Load X, print out, press any key, All right? And then um, another LD label here. We're going to jump subroutine kernel wait key branch of equals to LD minus. And it'll be in a loop until you press that key. Then we'll jump subroutine view disk data. That will show us what we're going to be working with. Boom, we've got our load. And it's simple as that for loading. Let's see if we can compile it. It does compile. And I wonder what would happen. Let's see, do the directory. There's no file on there yet. Because we're looking for disk, uh, disk tool data, I believe. Let's see. Yep, let's just tool data. File not found. So it's telling you from our status what's going on. All right. Uh, oh, one thing I'd like to point out here is I wanted to demonstrate where it says loading disk tool data. Okay. And it's showing the memory that's in memory already. So don't be fooled by that. Um, the one I wanted to point out here. It's where we printed off this stuff. Let's go ahead and take out this SBC for just a second. 
the subtract with carry and you'll see when we try and load if you hit L it's going to put up funky jank characters onto the screen and that's because the translation is um, a little different for screen codes than it is for like uh, you know I don't know exactly how to term it but the disk files use a different code right a different kind of encoding so that's what this is doing here but this is only going to work with uh, letters there's 255 different characters and there are different locations that you have to finagle with if you're going to be working with a file name just to let you know about that all right so now that we got our loading routine done we can go ahead and finish up with our our save data routine and it's about as long as the the, the load uh, routine so first thing I'm going to do is put at the end I'm going to copy and paste right this is the same sort of thing as your load loading text but I just called it save saving and it's encoded uh, text to print onto the screen and same similar thing as what we did up here matter of fact you could probably just copy this whole section right here and instead of putting in uh, save let's put it to save saving save saving All right File name, do, do, do. Let's see, this function guard. We'll put S here for save routine. Oh, I should put SVs here. Hang on a second. Okay, there we go. So let's go over it real quick. Close screen black, load X zero, create a label SV, save saving comma X, branch of equal to SV plus. It's gonna be here. Uh, store accumulator, screen RAM. You're just printing saving onto the screen. That's what that's doing. And then um, I'm gonna start again here. So we're gonna print the file name back onto the screen after the saving. So we're gonna say saving file name, whatever you have. See what I mean? And that's pretty much a loop through that. And once you get done printing those off, we're now almost at the actual save routine that we want to implement. Okay, so let's take a look. What we wanna do is, let's go ahead and display the disk data this is not the full view disk data routine it's just going to put the chunk of data out onto the screen while it's saving so you know what you're saving so we're going to do open up the logical file system again for drive number and load y with ff same things we did in the other one so the first initial step is the same. Kernel set logical file system. Okay. So we're loading the uh, drive number, setting the logical file number to eight in our case, or whatever we have it selected to on our disk tool. All right. And then uh, next thing will be uh, load accumulator with file name length. And then load X with file name. And load, that would be the low byte of file name. And then load Y with the high byte of file name. Okay. And then jump subroutine. Which one? Kernel. Set. 
Name. Yep, you got it. Okay. Let's see what's next. Okay, so saving is a little different than just loading something. Because you're going to be asked to save a certain data location. So this is where we have to set up um, the, the actual data location, right? So we're going to load accumulator with the low bytes of data start. I'm going to store that in ZP pointer low. Then we're going to load X. Did I do this right? No, no, no. Load A with the data start again, but the high byte of it. And then store that in ZP zero page pointer high. Okay. So we're storing those into. Mm -mm -mm. Zero pointer, zero page pointers. And we're going to do the same thing again. Load X with data end. And then load Y with the high byte of data end. So let's take a look at, at, at load, uh, save. Let's see, save. Input, address of a zero page register. So this is your A. So you have to put it in zero page. Register, holding start address of memory error to save. And the X and Y equals your end address. Whoops. Oh, what the heck? Let's do this. X and Y equals end address of memory error plus one. Output, we're not really gonna worry about the output. We can just look at the uh, drive status, okay? So this is what we gotta do, right? We get the data start, low byte, put it in a zero page pointer low. Get the high byte, data start, put it in a zero page pointer high. And then your X and Y are your data end, low byte, and high byte, okay? And after you've done all that, we'll have to Put the low byte of ZP pointer low, right, into the accumulator. That's telling the kernel save routine where to start loading into memory, or where to get its memory to save onto disk, I should say. And then should be done at that point, right? We'll put that into a little block there. And um, just to finish this up, we're going to do a couple of char outs and then jump subroutine show drive status. This will put two carriage returns, line feeds, and then show drive status. Okay. Then we want to do our at this point, let's do print off the press text key and then wait for key to be pressed. And since I've already done this a couple times, I'm just gonna paste it back in, right? And so now, hopefully this will compile and then that's pretty much it. Let's take a look. So directory, there's no files on there. Let's view the data. This is the data that I filled in from this data dot assembly. So let's save the data and let's see what happens. Those characters don't look quite too cool up there. Let's see if we got a directory. Hey, it's on there. Two blocks. So let's view the data again. Now we're going to randomize the data. View the data again, just to verify. Okay, yes, see, it's randomized. Let's do a load now. Hopefully, this will load our data back in from the disk. 
Yep, there you go. And it is loaded back in from disk. And there you go. That is the entirety of this episode. I hope you learned something and we're gonna continue to keep learning. I'm gonna start putting out some uh, more programming videos as I go along, as I learn more. The next thing we're gonna do, initialize the disk and erase the file. And then that'll be the basis of our CitiZen disk tool. And I may just set that aside after that, but it'll give you the basics of how to work with data and save it and load it from your programs that you create. Next one that we're going to do after that is going to be, um, we're going to explore programming RAM expansion units. And that'll be kind of interesting. I've never done it, so it'll be a learning experience for me too. Please leave a comment and let us know what you're working on. Until next time, this is Deadline, see you soon.